Hello, in today's episode I would like to tell you a few words about lordotic posture. What is it and what physiotherapists can do about it. My name is Kate and welcome to my channel. Lordotic posture is a term a little bit misleading because lordosis in our lumbar spine is something absolutely normal, natural and even desirable. Problems may occur when we have too much of this curvature, which is called hyperlordosis. In such a case, pelvis is moved forward, which is called excessive anterior pelvic tilt, and the posture takes on a characteristic curved shape with belly facing forward. In patients with hyperlordosis, a characteristic depression in the lumbar section can also be noticed. In these patients, if we perform the forward bend test, the lumbar lordosis becomes shallower, but never completely flattened. But as I said, lordosis is something normal and hyperlordosis is something wrong. So where is the line between? Interestingly, scientists have found it is really difficult to determine uniform normal values of the lordotic angle because there are many factors that may affect it, such as age, gender, body mass index, sports, ethnicity, uh, muscular strength, flexibility of the spine, flexibility of lower extremities and many others. So technically speaking, um, the optimal perfect lordotic angle, lordotic range remains unknown. However, since excessive curvature of the lumbar spine may contribute to certain diseases, some artificial boundaries have to be established as to what is the norm in the case of lumbar lordosis and what is not. And today we say that normal lordotic angle is around 30 degrees and angles more than 40 indicate hyperlordosis. How do we measure it? Lumbar lordotic angle, LLA, is measured by simple x-rays of the lateral view of the lumbar region at the intersection between the line extending from the upper plate L1 and the other extending from the lower plate L5. And again, 30 degrees is normal, more than 40 is hyperlordotic. What can lordotic posture cause? There is evidence that lumbar lordosis angle is positively and significantly associated with spondylolysis and isthmic spondylolisthesis. However, no association has been found with other spinal degenerative features. And now the most important, because it is a lie that has been repeated many times on the internet. Evidence exists for association between lumbar hyperlordosis and low back pain is inconclusive. This means that people with lordotic posture do not suffer from lower back pain any more than the rest of the population. In fact, Studies suggest something totally opposite, that lower back pain is associated with decreased lumbar lordotic curvature. In particular, if we are talking about disc herniation, it is closely related to the loss of lumbar lordosis and not to hyperlordosis. So increasing the curvature of the lumbar spine actually protects the disc, not the other way around. If you want to read more about it, as usual, all links to the scientific publications can be found in the movie description. But let's get back to hyperlordosis. Since it is not strictly connected to lower back pain, should we really care? The answer is, it depends. If I have a young patient without pain, physically fit, with slight hyperlordosis, I usually see no reason to deal with it. Of course, after performing all necessary tests, checking mobility, etc. But if I have an obese, middle-aged, physically disabled patient, Still pain-free, but with a severe hyperlordosis, I recommend rehabilitation to prevent effects of hyperlordosis, which may occur in the future like spondylolysis or isthmic spondylolisthesis. And how do I act then? In the case of lumbar hyperlordosis, muscle imbalance occurs in the pelvis area. The muscles in the lower back and the front of the thigh are too tense, while the abdomen and the back of the thigh are weakened. This situation is described as lower cross syndrome. Physiotherapeutic task is mainly to strengthen weakened muscles in order to regain muscle balance. In most of these patients, the greatest deficit is in the abdominal, rectus and oblique muscles, which is why we focus especially on strengthening these muscles. Now I will show you 5 exercises that can be performed for lordotic posture. Exercise 1. Lie on your back and raise both legs up. Perform chest lifts towards the feet. Do 5 sets of 10 repetitions. Exercise 2. Sit with your legs raised up and your knees bent. Try not to sit on your buttocks, but lean your torso back to put weight on your sacrum. Make hand movements, one to the right and one to the left. You can carry a light object, for example a ball. Do five sets of 10 repetitions on each side. Exercise 3. 
Lie on your side with your legs bent. Tie an elastic band around your thighs. Open your knees, leaving your feet together. Do five sets of 10 repetitions. Exercise four. Start on all fours and place your spine in an intermediate position. Flex your spine as much as possible towards the ceiling. Do five sets of 10 repetitions. Exercise five. Start from a standing position. Perform a half squat, leaning your buttocks back as much as possible. Control the deflection of the lumbar spine. Do five sets of 10 repetitions. And here are examples of exercises that you should avoid in the case of lumbar hyperlordosis. These are exercises that strongly activate the spinal erectors in the lumbar area and simply cause the lumbar lordosis to deepen even more. So don't do it. Finally, you will definitely ask me how long does it take to repair such hyperlordosis. And if you're impatient and uh, you expect uh, results after a week, then I have bad news for you because this is a long-term process, which may take months or sometimes even years of regular workout. But it can be done and in some cases it is really worth starting. That will be all. If you like the movie, leave thumbs up, stay with me for longer by hitting sub button and see you next time. Thanks.